Welcome to my new house. If you don't know me, I just moved from renting a house in Humboldt County down to owning a house in Ojai, California. And the house we bought is less than a thousand square feet. So for the foreseeable future, I'm gonna have to film in my kitchen and I hope that's okay. But I think this might be the best lighting I've ever had. Since I have been so deep prepping for the move and then settling in over the past two months, I have collected an enormous amount of new beauty launches. But the thing is, I like to keep a smaller collection for a YouTuber. I have a full-time corporate job. I have chronic illness. I have EDS, POTS, among a bunch of other things. I'm neurodivergent, so I'm very busy and I'm very tired. And that's relevant because I like products that are just really easy to use that don't take me much time to apply. I can kind of slap them on in the dark if I have to. And I just don't like products that take a lot of effort. And if something doesn't beat out my holy grails, then it's just gonna sit there in my makeup drawers waiting to go expired and then be thrown out in the trash. And I don't like that. So I'm gonna be super ruthless in this video. I'm only allowing myself to keep 20 products from this entire video. And that includes all of the shades. I think I have about 50 in total here. So I'm gonna have to be very critical. And if you're new here, I'm extremely ruthless when it comes to product reviews, even products that I get for free in PR and all the brands I work with know that. Speaking of, I'll be reviewing the new Milk Makeup blush stains that went super viral online and I have strong thoughts as well as a new blush launch that stains and is even easier to use. So if you wanna know what makes the cut, keep on watching and now let's do this. I have just a couple launches that aren't makeup, so I'm gonna breeze through them really quickly. I have the Salt Air Volume Boost Shampoo and Conditioner. I've been using these for about a month. And my honest thoughts are that no shampoo or conditioner has ever changed my life, truthfully. I've never noticed a real difference using volume shampoos and conditioners. What I do notice though, is that if I use a super moisturizing conditioner that's meant for thicker, more dry, coarse hair, that's when my hair starts looking really weighed down. So I love using volume shampoos and conditioners just because they are a lot lighter on my hair. I have very fine hair, not a lot of it. I mean, look at this sad little ponytail. And these definitely don't weigh my hair down. I love salt air because they come in big value sizes at a great price point. These are 14 ounces for just $12. I love love this beautiful blue packaging. Any kind of iteration of turquoise is definitely my favorite color, and I love the scent. They're safe for color-treated hair, and the fragrance is called Laguna, and the notes are fizzy bergamot, sunny grapefruit, and ozonic musk. Fresh, ozonic, tropical. Notes of bergamot, black currant, grapefruit, and ozonic musks capture a warm tropical escape. It smells tropical and fresh and oceany in a sense. So really liking these, but again, it's a shampoo and a conditioner, so keep your expectations in check. So these are going in the best category, and I'm definitely gonna be keeping them. Next. Oh, excuse me. Oh my God. <laughs> Next up, I have the new Rare Beauty Comfort line. And let's start with the aromatherapy pen, which is my favorite from the line. This smells absolutely incredible. And what's really interesting is that it has this gel cream formula. So you basically just pump it and then you can apply it to your wrists. You can put some on your neck. I actually like to put some under my nose so that I can continue smelling it. It smells absolutely incredible. It smells like a spa. It's really just lavender and peppermint. And I'm not a big lavender fan, but for some reason it is perfectly balanced and beautiful. And I love it in this aromatherapy pen. And when you smell it, it really does make you feel calm and refreshed. And it gives you that kind of sensual scent experience that helps to calm the nervous system. However, this is so subtle, it disappears in about 10 seconds. And I could slather myself in this aromatherapy pen and still barely smell it. So Rare Beauty was so close to launching a banger and something that I honestly would have really enjoyed using because it, it does make me feel calmer. But because this disappears so quickly, I just think you would get much better value in purchasing a lavender and a peppermint essential oil, mixing it together, and then you get much better bang for your buck. Sadly, because this fades, I'm gonna put this in the worst category, which means one less product I have to put in my collection. I do enjoy the Rare Beauty Find Comfort Hydrating Hand Cream. In terms of the formula, it's beautiful. It really sets to a satin finish on the hands, and you'll see as I'm rubbing it in, it just doesn't leave that greasy, dewy, oily feeling on your hands where you then go to touch your computer and you feel like you're, you're getting little oil stains all over your computer. That's my absolute nightmare when it comes to a hand cream. I love the formula of this. It really does hydrate and moisturize your hands, but it sets down and feels like absolutely nothing on your skin. However, I do have to point out that the fragrance on this one is just way too strong for me. And I know a YouTuber, Alexandra Anel, I think that's her last name. I'll leave her channel linked in the description box below. She did a dedicated review to the Rare Beauty Find Comfort line, and she actually started noticing like eczema or dermatitis on her hand, probably because the fragrance is so strong. So for those of you who are like me and have extremely sensitive skin, I would say probably skip this line 
line because it's very much focused on fragrance, which makes me so bummed because this formula was gonna be my favorite hand cream formula of all time. If they came out with a fragrance-free version, I will be the first one to buy it and I would keep this in my backpack for when I travel. Sadly, she's going in the worst category. I hate saying this, but unfortunately, same experience with the Rare Beauty Find Comfort Hydrating Body Lotion, banger of a formula, way too fragranced. And I'm so grateful to Rare Beauty for including me in this PR. The only other PR I've received from Rare Beauty are their tinted lip oils. So they're very picky who they send PR to and I'm grateful to receive it. But I just want you to know that if you have a sensitive nose like I do, this is just gonna be too strong for you. This is even more fragranced than the hand cream. But damn, that formula is good. It again, isn't too dewy or greasy or oily. It spreads really easily. It sinks into the skin really easily and then it sets to this beautiful satin finish. I will say the packaging is extremely hard to squeeze and because I have hypermobile EDS, I have an even harder time gripping things. And if you have EDS or if you have hypermobile joints or any kind of disability, you might also find an issue squeezing this. So, you know, not my favorite product. It's also $28 and you know, body lotion is something that I really don't splurge on. But if you don't have a sensitive nose, this is absolutely beautiful. It has notes of violet, vetiver, and lemon zest. It just smells very warm, very fresh, spicy almost. It's just, it's a really great fragrance. I think a lot of people are gonna like, but it is just very, very fragrance to the point where when I wore this, I actually had to shower it off an hour later because it was giving me a headache. If you're not sensitive to smells, it's beautiful, but for me, I'm putting it in the worst category and I'm gonna send it to a friend of mine. And lastly, before we get into the makeup, we have the Saatchi Cleansing Duo. These are sold separately or you can get them in a duo. The blue cleanser is called the Saponins Cream Cleanser. It's four ounces for $44, so it is a pricier cleanser. So this one's meant for dry and sensitive skin and it has a really nice cream texture. There are like little petals of something in here that I thought were supposed to be exfoliating particles, but I talked to the founder and she said they're like Ayurvedic petals. It's derived from the Ayurvedic soap berry. Saponins is a plant surfactant that lathers gently. So you do feel these little petals, but they dissolve almost immediately and this is super gentle. I think my favorite though is the one in the pink bottle, which is the Saffron Luminous Cleanser for $39. It has more of a bouncy gel texture. It's not stripping at all. And the star ingredient of this one is saffron, of course. And they say it's an Ayurvedic super ingredient, which has benefits like being anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, anti bacterial properties. And this one's also very gently exfoliating. So if you don't know me, I have incredibly sensitive skin that's also very acne prone. Shout out EDS, thank you so much. By the way, Dr. Dre just did a video on EDS and skin, which I'll leave in the description box below. If you have EDS, it's really interesting. I actually didn't know until I watched Dr. Dre's video that EDS causes acne and issues with our barrier, so. <laughs> blessed. But both of these cleansers are very gentle. I really don't even feel any exfoliating experience with this. They both are very effective, super great on my acne prone and sensitive skin. I just think that for me, when it comes to cleansers, I rarely splurge on cleansers. You know, I'm pretty much a drugstore girl when it comes to certain staples. And then I splurge on something like the Saatchi Pro Resilient Serum. That one I think is like $75, but it is the only thing that soothes my sensitive skin. These are a nice to have, but not a must have for me. I'm about to run out of the cleanser that I'm using. So I'm definitely putting these straight in the shower and I'm going to put these in the best category. It's makeup time and we're going to start with the new Makeup Forever Foundation. It's the HD Skin Hydro Glow Foundation and my perfect shade match is 1R02 and it is a great shade match if you have skin that's in between fair and light that's cool toned. All right, this is a tragedy for me because I'm going to make this statement right here. This is one of the best foundations I have ever tried and it is one of the most frustrating foundations I have ever tried because it is chock full of fragrance. This is even more heavily fragranced than the last Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation, which gave me a literal chemical burn. But we'll get to my experience in a second. So Makeup Forever says this is an 86% skincare-based foundation with medium coverage and a naturally luminous finish that hydrates, smooths, and visibly plumps and brightens skin. This is $47 and I believe it comes in 32 shades. And man, I am so disappointed in Makeup Forever for this one. This looks beautiful on the skin. So I have combination skin that gets quite oily throughout my T-zone. So I really tend to stray far away from glowy foundations. I like just being able to go in and add a little bit of highlighter wherever I want that glow. My face has enough on its own, but this is the kind of glow foundation that I've been looking for. It truly does look like it plumps the skin. It looks like your skin is healthy and hydrated and bouncy and beautiful. For me, most skincare foundations end up pilling or they end up feeling really heavy. Like the Say foundation was an absolute disaster for me, probably the worst foundation I've ever tried. And I was worried that this was gonna be like the Say foundation, but it's 
it's not. It just feels so incredibly lightweight and creamy on the skin, but it just leaves you looking like you have your best skin. It really does. It doesn't cling to dryness or any of my breakouts and texture. It just smooths everything over and it looks so beautiful and I have a great shade match and I'm so sad that they put so much fragrance in this because it's not even a subtle fragrance. It smacks you in the face with fragrance and it smells like a floral, clean, aquatic perfume. It smells truly like cleaning product to me. It is extraordinarily strong on the nose. I have an update on the Makeup Forever Foundation. So I've worn it about six times since I filmed this video. I'm actually wearing it right now. And interestingly, the first week I was wearing it, it was heavily fragranced. I mean, it smelled like some type of clean, fresh perfume. And now I don't smell anything, which is very bizarre. So I don't know what happened there. I had shaken the bottle every single time I used it. So I don't know, maybe somehow the fragrance was like settling around the pump and I just got a lot of the fragrance in the beginning while I was wearing it. Either way, I can barely smell it anymore, but it does still have lemon extract and fragrance. So if you have sensitive skin, just a heads up. Because of that, it means that I can't wear it every day. If I wore this every day, I would end up getting a rash on my face because of the fragrance. I think this is the kind of thing that I'm gonna keep in my collection, but I'm only gonna be able to reach for it on special occasions. For whatever reason, my Armani foundation, the Luminous Silk one, which is my holy grail, also has fragrance, but it has never seemed to irritate me and I can wear it every day, no problem. This one though is significant significantly more fragrance. So I'm just a little bit more hesitant to use it on a regular basis, but I cannot deny the fact that this is one of the best foundations I have ever tried. So I would say if you have sensitive skin, proceed with caution. If you don't have sensitive skin, give this bad boy a try because Makeup Forever is currently running a promotion where you can get their HD Skin Foundation. It's $18 sold separately, or I think right now, if you have a promo code, you can get it for free with the foundation, but by the time this video goes up, it may no longer be active. So this is $18 and it has a traditional sponge on one side, and then on the flat side, it has more of a stiff, rubbery texture, which is really interesting. I've never applied foundation with rubber before, and this took me forever to blend the foundation out because the rubber part just leaves little streaks on your face as you tap it in. The the foundation really doesn't sink into the rubber part, which I think is their point because it really lets you keep the coverage. And then if you wanna use the spongier part, that kind of soaks up the foundation and you get lighter coverage that way. Nice in theory, but the rubber part just ended up leaving streaks all over my face. So I just don't think you need to spend $18 on this. You can use whatever foundation brush you have or your fingers or you know another makeup sponge. Next up, we have a controversial new launch. This is the Kosas BB Burst Tinted Gel Cream. I have the shade 15 Light Cool, which my friend Dev sent me. Thank you so much, Dev, for letting me try this. I'll get into why it's controversial in a second, but first of all, it's $38. It comes in 24 shades and they describe this as a clean tinted gel cream. That's a fresh take on tinted moisturizer. It delivers a refreshing burst of active skincare, light buildable coverage, and a smooth hydrated natural finish. This has copper peptides to support collagen, saccharide isomerate and sodium PCA to smooth hydrate and support the skin barrier and zinc to soothe sensitive skin and redness. So I actually really like this and I'm not a skin tint person because most skin tints just don't give me any coverage and end up looking really dewy on the skin. And like I've said, I have combination skin, so I don't need dew all over my face. This really does set to a beautiful natural finish on the skin. And it just makes you look like you have healthy, hydrated, bouncy, plump skin. And that's exactly what we're going for. So I absolutely love the finish. You know, for me being so incredibly acne prone, especially right now, I've been going through a huge issue with my hormones. I skipped a period for the first time in my entire life while we were going through the move. And for me, this just doesn't give me enough coverage being so acne prone. And I've said it before, but I will say it again. You don't need to own skin tints. You don't need to own tinted moisturizer. All you need is one full coverage foundation with a natural finish and you can customize from there. You can mix it with moisturizer. You can mix it with a glowy primer like my favorite In Beauty face glaze. You could mix it with a glowy bronzer like the In Beauty bronze face glaze or something like that. You can mix it with a mattifying primer and make the foundation a little bit more matte. You can have every product you need if you have just one full coverage foundation with a natural finish. So I just don't believe in skin tints and tinted moisturizers because of that necessarily. But if you love a skin tint, I think this is incredible. Now here's where the controversy comes in. Water is the first ingredient on the list. So it's a water-based gel cream, which means if you have anything in your skincare routine or your primer or your sunscreen that has a little bit of dimethicone or silicone in it, this is going to be an absolute disaster. And that was unfortunately my experience. I have super sensitive skin and I can't wear any chemical sunscreen. So I can only use mineral sunscreens and all of my mineral sunscreens that look best under makeup all contain a little bit of dimethicone. So the only way I would be able to wear this product is if I'm wearing it at night, once the sun has gone down and I'm not wearing my 
sunscreen. But what's the point of that? I mean, I would just rather wear my foundation and not have this sitting around waiting to be used on the like once a month occasion when I do my makeup at night. Also, this has a scent. It smells floral, which is frustrating because it's another product that's marketed as being clean. But in my opinion, if you have fragrance or essential oils or some type of, you know, essential oil extracts, I don't believe that that's clean because that causes me to have rashes. That's a whole other soapbox I will save for another day. This contains lavendula extract, which is lavender. And that is just a one-way ticket to irritation town for me. So this is a banger of a product. If you like a light coverage base, you don't have sensitive skin and you don't use any dimethicone in any of your routine. But if you're like me, then I'm gonna put this in the worst category and pass it on to a friend. Next up, we have the Live Tinted Hue Stick in Aura, which is a new shade of their color corrector. It's a very light pink. I'm gonna be super quick on this because I really don't use color correctors. I find that my Fit Glow Concealer is perfect for me and I don't really need a corrector. But this is $26 and it comes in four shades. So this is meant for fair skin. It has squalane, hyaluronic acid, vitamin C, and E. And for me, this is just too light. I would need a peach if I were gonna go for color correction. When I put this under concealer, it made my under eyes look way too bright. So this is just a shade thing for me. But I also found that this had kind of a dewy texture and I felt like that just disrupted the finish of my concealer. But also I just have to point out, Live Tinted uses metal packaging and I'm gonna hold this up to the microphone. Can you hear this? If you scratch it, oh! I have full body chills and I just got an entire wave of nausea throughout my body because of the feeling of metal. And when you like take the cap off, the metal touches the metal. I don't know if it's an EDS thing because EDS causes sensory issues or if it's a neurodivergent thing because that also causes sensory issues. And it's the same thing of the caps of their gloss. So I just wish that they would change their packaging. Unfortunately for me, I'm putting this in the worst category. We have an interesting lip product. This is supposedly the world's first lip toner and it's the Good Light, The Taste of Space Lip Milk. This is $16 and they say it's a creamy, quick absorbing lip milk treatment that hydrates, smooths, and nourishes with a delicious raspberry flavor inspired by the center of the galaxy. This is an all-in-one nourishing formula that's part balm, gloss, and mask, leaving lips restored and nourished from day to night. It has collagen, panthenol, mango seed butter, and raspberry extract. And I was very confused why raspberry smells like the galaxy, but it says here on the website, the taste of space lip milk gets its name from the center of the galaxy where ethyl formate, the molecule responsible for the delight flavor of raspberries can be found. A real fact. That's very interesting. So I honestly don't have that much to say about this product yet, but I do really enjoy the way that this feels and smells. I don't think it's going to transform your life, so it's not something that you desperately need to go out of your way to purchase, but I do think it's really nice. And what the brand said is that you do have to treat it like a toner. So think of it as just a toner where you have to go in and add an occlusive layer on top to seal in all the hydration. But the smell of this alone is enough to make me want to use it. It smells like raspberry ice cream. It's just, it's creamy and fruity and oh, it smells so good. And I have to say, I really like it. It makes my lips feel really hydrated. I like using it as a serum and then going in with a balm on top. It's definitely a little bit extra, but when it comes to lip products, I don't mind being extra. The only thing I don't like about this is the applicator. It has a very straight, stiff, pointy applicator, which really doesn't make any sense to me. I would have wanted something a little bit more cushiony and soft, a little bit angled. So the applicator is just a little bizarre, but that's really not a big deal. I'm just being super critical like I always am. So I'm gonna put this in the best category because it's a product I haven't seen before. I'm enjoying using it and I wanna keep testing it out. Let's move on to new blushes and boy, do I have thoughts. Let's start with the new Milk Makeup Cooling Water Jelly Tints. I was lucky enough to go to the launch party for these in LA because my friend Star invited me as her plus one and it was super fun. I got to learn all about the product and it was super funny because at that event, they actually said that people were genuinely eating these on TikTok. So do not eat them. They're not jello, they're not edible, they're a blush. These are $24 and they're a high pigment water stain that applies like a super jiggly jelly and then immediately sets down on the skin. So wherever you put this on your skin, it is gonna stay there and you get almost no blend time. The cooling water jelly tints have vegan collagen, aloe, and seawater, and they provide a vibrant watercolor finish that won't melt off midday. So here are the strong thoughts that I talked about earlier. I'm mostly just annoyed at influencers on this one. So this product went super viral on TikTok. And you know, influencers go influence, they're gonna do the thing where they try to get a reaction and you know, that encourages engagement and a viral moment online, but I'm not like that. And I actually want products to work well and I wanna be able to use them and let you guys know if they're easy to use. So these are really easy to use, but I think you're seeing a lot of content online where people are striping this on their cheeks and then they're waiting, they're grabbing their brush, they go to blend it out and then, oh, 
you get the influencer shock face when the product immediately sets down. Like these are a stain, they're gonna stain. What I care about is that my face eats cream blush and this is the most long lasting blush stain I have ever tried. Just be smart, don't go stripe it on your face and then be shocked when it stains. I like to apply this directly to a brush and then I kind of wipe it off on the back of my hand so that I remove any excess stain and I'm coating the brush hairs evenly which is gonna give me an even application. And as you can see in this clip, I get a really even application and it's not going on too pigmented. So these are absolutely easy to use as long as you don't swipe them on your skin. I also tried the method of applying it directly to the cheek so you can get the cooling effect. And as you can see in this clip, it also works if you apply it directly to the skin. You just have to work really quickly because there isn't any kind of like gel-like quality or silicones in the formula that would give you more blend time. It's a water stain, so they set down super fast. But as you can see, I'm applying it directly to the skin and it works just fine. I didn't do any cuts in the footage so you can see that I just waited a couple seconds and it's still blended. I do think that it gets a little bit patchy if you do it that way. I mean, do we really need to have a cooling effect in our blushes? I don't personally need that. So I think it's great if you apply it with a brush. And here's the shade Spritz applied directly to the skin. I just waited a couple seconds to grab my brush and it blends just fine. So you can use this however you want. You can apply indirectly with a brush or directly on the skin. As long as you work quickly, it's gonna be just fine. And I do think that it works better over an emollient base, but I've tried using this over powder and it also applies totally fine that way as well. So just be careful, know that it's a stain and work quickly. And these have the most insane wear time out of any cream or liquid blush I've ever tried. I did a whole wear test on Instagram and by nine hours at the end of the day, these still look almost freshly applied. I know Ali Glines did a video and she had the same thing where by the end of the day, she did a lot of side-by-side -side comparisons and it did not budge. And I had the same experience for these. So if you're like me and your face just eats cream blush and you're looking for a stain that's really long lasting, I think these are absolutely incredible. But if you think that there's just too much hype around these and they look a little too pigmented for you or they set a little bit too quickly, I have a product that is even easier to use. These are the ones that deserved the viral moment in my opinion. These are the new Bodyography Color Cassette Liquid Blush Stains. This is a gel liquid formula, so you get a beautiful blend from these because of that gel-like texture, but they're also a liquid, so they do set down on the skin, but they have a dewy finish, which is just absolutely stunning. These are also skincare infused with Bakuchi which has anti-aging, antibacterial, antioxidant, and anti-inflammatory properties. They come in four shades and they're $22 each. Like I said, they're so easy to use because they blend like a dream and they have that gorgeous, subtle kind of glossy effect on the skin, but they set down and you have a ton of blend time before they set down. So if something like the Milk Makeup Blush Stains just seem a little bit too tricky to use for you, these are the most beginner-friendly blush stain I've ever tried and they really deserve more hype online. What I will say is the only shade on me that didn't stain was the shade Tempo, which is a peach, but Amplify, Soul, and Melody all stained my cheeks and lasted incredibly well throughout the day. After eight hours, they still looked freshly applied, just like the Milk Makeup stains. So while I like the Milk Makeup Cooling Water Jelly Tints, I like the Bodyography Color Cassettes even more. Now, we have to figure out what I'm keeping because I like all these products, so I have to get a little bit ruthless here. You don't need both of these colors. One of them's a berry, one of them's a pink. They look almost the same on the cheeks. I'm gonna keep the shade Splash for Milk Makeup because this one was a little bit more sheer than Burr. And because it's more sheer, I find that it's easier to use and they both just look the same on the cheeks anyways. So I'm gonna send Burst to a friend. All right, this is a tough one. Out of the four Bodyography Color Cassettes, I'm definitely keeping the shade Soul, which is my favorite. It's on the more sheer side and it's a baby doll pink, but it's very easy to build up in pigment. And then they have Amplify, which is a darker pink with more pigment. So if you have deeper skin, I would go Amplify. If you have lighter skin, go Soul. So I'm gonna keep Soul and pass Amplify. And then I have Tempo and Melody. Tempo didn't stain as much and it's more of a peach, which I don't reach for as much. So I think I'm going to keep Melody, which is a coral. And I love the way that this looks with the Fenty hydrating pouticle stain in my type, the perfect summer cheek and lip combination. So keeping Soul and Melody and passing on Tempo and Amplify. I've got two products in the eye makeup category and then all lip products. So buckle up. I just have to talk about the eyeshadow I'm wearing today because you're going to be so excited about it. It's the Moira Chroma Light Shadow in 5 Sugar Crush. This is very similar to Urban Decay Space Cowboy, but what I like about 
about this one is this has more of a flaky foil texture rather than the very sheer base of Urban Decay Space Cowboy and also more of the hard pressed texture. So you get a lot more payoff with the Moira Chroma Light Shadow line. And this has a stronger base pigment and it's a little bit more of a rose gold peach versus like a yellow peach undertone of Urban Decay Space Cowboy. And what I like about this is because it has a stronger base pigment, I can use this as a one and done shadow like I did on my lids today, but it's sheer enough with just tapping my finger in the pan lightly that I can also use it as a beautiful glitter topper. It is just so incredibly reflective on the eyes. It's only $5, so honestly, I think this is worth picking up. It reminds me a lot of the ColourPop Super Shock shadows, but I like this a lot more. It's the only eyeshadow I've worn for the past two weeks. That's how much I love it. My friend, Dear Eva Hansen, bought every single shade in this line, and so I'll leave her video linked in the description box. She did eye swatches for every single one, but Sugar Crush is my favorite, and it is definitely going in the best category. I'm already keeping 10 products from this video, so I'm gonna have to start getting really ruthless. And now we have new shades from an existing product range. This is the Persona 24 hour waterproof eye pencil and they launched three new shades. We have chocolate, stone, and graphite. Chocolate is the one that I'm wearing on my upper waterline today and these do not smudge or transfer or budge at all. And they are ultra creamy, so they're really easy to apply to the waterline. And sometimes they're so creamy that I have a difficult time doing them as an eyeliner, like a winged liner look. I prefer a pencil that's a little bit more stiff to do a winged liner look. But what I love about these is that they do not budge. Once they set, they are there to stay. And chocolate is actually brown. I'm so sick of eyeliners being called brown and not being brown. Like the Persona shade in brown was basically just like a lighter black. And so I don't like that color. I'm so glad they came out with chocolate because chocolate is actually a warm brown that looks brown. Definitely keeping chocolate. Then we have graphite and stone. As the name would suggest, graphite is like a darker gray. And I think it's really nice, but I just don't necessarily need this one in my collection because I really only reach for brown eyeliners anyways on a day-to-day -day basis. But if you're looking for that kind of color, this is definitely fantastic. And then stone, I would describe as the same thing as chocolate, but with some gold metallic shimmer running throughout it. I don't really see the need personally for me for metallic eyeliners. If I'm going to do a winged look, I just want like my matte brown and I'm good. But because this has a metallic finish, it does go on a little bit more sheer. So it's a little bit easier to use. Beautiful shades, but honestly, I just need one. So I'm keeping chocolate and getting rid of stone and graphite. Let's talk about the new Summer Fridays Dream Lip Oils. Now, I didn't think I was going to like these, but I kind of do. And I'm really surprised by it. These are $26. They come in four shades. And the description says they're a plush lip oil that glides on like a dream to deliver a high shine tint and intense hydration. These are fragrance free, but they do have a little bit of menthol. So you get that cooling sensation. But what I will say is if you're sensitive to lip plumpers or menthol or anything cooling like I am, this is probably the most subtle that I've ever tried, which is why I do actually like these. I don't like anything intensely cooling. These are barely, barely noticeable. If you're new here, I really prefer products that are thicker, that have more of a tacky or sticky texture because it makes them long lasting. And I find that thicker products that have a tacky finish just really add that glass-like shine and smooth over lip lines. I just find that because of my lip size or shape for whatever reason, thinner, more runny products tend to just get around my mouth and slip and slide and I don't like that feeling. But there's something about these that I enjoy. It might be because I really don't own a lot of like slippery products in my collection. And sometimes it's just nice to have something different. But I think these exceeded my expectations because they're marked it as a lip oil, but I wouldn't describe them like that. To me, they have a little bit of a cushiony quality to them. So they've got this like almost buttery lip serum type feeling mixed with a lip oil. So they're nice if you like a more lightweight product because they have that kind of buttery slip, but they're not super slippery. They don't run outside my lip lines. And because they have a touch of that gel like cushion that I really like, I've actually been finding myself reaching for two of the shades quite regularly. There are some discrepancies among the shades, so I'm going to review them individually. Pink Cloud is my least favorite because it's so sheer, I really don't notice it on my lips. So this one is an easy pass for me. I'm definitely gonna be sending this one to a friend. Blush Dreams is the one I've been reaching for the most regularly because it's a nice, soft, kind of warm, light peachy pink. Then we have Rosewood Nights, which is my friend Sierra's favorite shade. This one to me, I just know myself and I know that this is a color I'm not gonna reach for, even though it is beautiful. And I think it has a touch more pigment than the others. So I think that Rosewood Nights will be a crowd favorite, but I'm gonna pass this one on because I don't really reach for shades that are more like cool tone browns like this. I know that this video is all about best and worst and I'm supposed to be ruthless, but I would put this somewhere in the middle. Like it's a good launch, but it's not blowing my mind. But even for something that I categorize as just good, I still have been reaching for these two quite a lot. So I'm gonna keep them. I might have to get more ruthless at the end of this video, but for now, Blush Dreams and Soft Mauve are staying. And now for one of the worst lip launches I've tried, the Tower 28 Lip Softies. They're just not my vibe. They might be your vibe, but they're not my vibe. These are $16 each, and I really commend Tower 28 for having such a great price point on their products. They come in five shades, and the website says they're a clinically proven non-sticky lip balm treatment 
that delivers the intense hydration of a lip mask with a sweet sheer tint using food grade, non-artificial flavor. They have shea butter, jojoba oil, and lysine, and they are dermatologist approved. Let's start with what I like about these, the scents. The scents smell so good and they correspond to the names. So for example, the clear one is just clear vanilla and it smells like vanilla. My favorite is ube vanilla, which smells like vanilla frosting. Blood orange vanilla smells like blood orange vanilla. Dulce de leche is probably my second favorite smell, which smells like dulce de leche, of course. And I think my least favorite smell is watermelon kiwi. It smells very artificial to me. This smell makes me nauseous, so I really don't like this one. But the rest of them, I would totally want to eat them. They're that good. Now, here's where my positive experience ends. First and foremost, let's talk packaging. What is with this Carmex packaging. Who wants this? This is some old school shit. When you have a formula like this that is so thin and slippery, you really need an applicator that's gonna give you a little bit more control. So I find that this just slides right around. It's just, it's not a pleasant experience. I really just feel like the applicator was such an afterthought. I just don't understand what they were going for there. I feel like there were so many better options they could have tried. As for the formula, this is probably the thinnest product I've ever tried. It truly feels like almost nothing on your lips. So if you you are the kind of person who, you know, wants a more affordable product with a very thin, lightweight, kind of slippy, oily texture that comes in sheer to medium tints and has lots of yummy scents, then this might be a product that you really love. But for me, as someone who has issues with lip products really migrating outside my top lip, I need something that's gonna have a little bit of a coating to the lips, that's gonna be a little bit tackier or a little bit thicker. And because this is so thin, I find that the pigment really settles into lines and just doesn't make my lips look the best that they could. In my personal experience, with extremely lightweight, thin products is that they really aren't occlusive enough for me. So I feel like they kind of hydrate the lips, but then the hydration evaporates, leaving my lips feeling a little bit drier afterwards. So I'm quite surprised by all the positive reviews on Sephora saying that this like transformed their lips overnight. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the only person who has this experience. And I just wanted to say thank you to Tower 28 for continuously keeping me on their PR list, despite the fact that my makeup preferences are basically the opposite of what the brand launches. Their lip liner is is my holy grail lip liner in the shade Work of Art, but that's the only Tower 28 product that I like. All of the others are just not me for whatever reason. So thank you Tower 28 for, you know, like recognizing authenticity and honesty and transparency and still continuing to send me products. I think that's really great. So I'm putting this in the worst category and I'm decluttering all of the shades. But again, if you like a really lightweight lip product, then these might be for you. I'm gonna breeze through the new Hourglass Phantom Volumizing Glossy Lip Balms. I purchased Crave and Reveal, which are two of the pink shades. If you haven't seen my huge, glossy, melty, deep dive video. I'll leave that linked on the screen above and in the description box below. I reviewed every single product in this kind of category that kind of melts over the side. And this is definitely one of my favorites from that video. So I had to pick up the pink shades. These are $36 and they're from Hourglass. So they are a more luxury brand. These do have quite a noticeable presence of menthol in them. So if you're sensitive to that, heads up. It does have quite a cooling sensation on the lips, but for whatever reason, I don't find this one to be super annoying. I feel like my personal preference is I'm okay with a little bit of menthol as long as it doesn't have an intense like pepperminty scent because I have to be honest sometimes it's kind of nice when it's really hot out to have that cooling sensation on your lips but I find that I only reach for these on really hot days and not on cold days because like if it's in the winter time I don't want my lips to be colder this is the kind of lightweight formula that I love because it's lightweight and it is a little bit on the slippery side but it doesn't leave my lips feeling drier I still feel like it has this high shine finish that has like more of a glass like shine that smooths the lips and I find that that's very hard to do in a thinner formula so there is just magic in these lip balms Sephora says that the shade Reveal is a true pink, but I think it's a cool toned pink quite noticeably. I think Reveal is my favorite because I just love cool toned pinks on my cool toned skin. I think it looks really nice and brightening and you know, I just feel really fresh when I wear it. And they describe Crave as a warm pink, which I agree with. And I really like having both of these in my collection. These are one of only three products that I purchased in this video. The rest I received in PR. So I'm definitely gonna be keeping these. I purchased them because I knew I really love them and they do have a space in my collection. We have 18 different lip shades to go through and I'm already at 15 products I'm keeping, which means I can only keep five more products out of 18 that I have to try on still. Okay, I can do this. I can be ruthless. I know I can. Let's do this. Thrive Cosmetics sent me their entire line of their new Sheer Strength Peptide Plumping Lip Glosses. I've had a very strange experience with these. Like one second, I love them. Another second, I hate them, but I still find myself reaching for them all the time. It's a very confusing experience. These are $26 and they come in 10 shades. And the website says, our peptide-powered ultra-hydrating gloss 
gloss instantly plumps and revives lips with a hint of tint and all day moisture for visibly fuller, smoother looking lips. These are formulated with Maxi Lip, which is an ingredient that's clinically shown to plump lips. And I'm familiar with Maxi Lip. It's in a lot of lip balms that I've tried. So I'm excited to see it in a lip gloss. But what's really funny is when Thrive reached out to me and asked if I wanted to try these, I told them, you know, I'm really hesitant to try any plumping products because my lips are sensitive to menthol or anything cooling or burning. And someone from the brand assured me that these are not irritating. They didn't really answer my question when I asked if they had menthol in them. They just said, we promise they're not irritating. Well, I have to say this is the strongest amount of mint that I have ever experienced in a product. These are so intensely cooling. They stay minty on the lips for 30 minutes before that sensation wears off. So you really have to like a cooling sensation and a peppermint smell in order to like these. If you don't, give them a hard pass. Now here's where the confusion comes in. Normally I don't like that, but I have found myself reaching for three of the shades nonstop since I got them. And here's why. These have that kind of sticky, thicker lip gloss formula that I love. They really do feel like more of a traditional lip gloss in that sense of them being kind of tacky, but it's not tacky in a gloopy way to me. It's, it's tacky in a long lasting way. We're like, when I put one of these on my lips an hour later, it is still there. And that's what I really like in a lip product. Now these don't have a very high shine finish. They're not super smoothing. So if you want something that's like intensely glossy, that is just gonna give you that glass like shine, I would skip these. But but I've just really been liking them because I love three of the shades. I love that they have maxi lip in the ingredients and I love that thicker sticky formula. One con to these is there's almost no product on the applicator, which is really annoying. I have to dip two to three times in order to cover my lips and I don't have very large lips. So if you do, you would have to dip several times in order to cover the surface area of your lips. So I wish the applicator picked up a little bit more product because I find it annoying to keep having to dip back in. But honestly, it's not a big deal. I just like being very detailed and very critical so that you can make the best decision for yourself as a consumer. We work really hard for the money that we make and I want you to be able to have all of the information presented in front of you so you can decide, okay, does this product work for me or does this product not work for me? That's why I'm so critical here. That said, there are three shades that I really like that I want to keep, but we're already at 15 products. So let's decide which ones I'm getting rid of. Okay, the orange and the red shade. I really don't reach for oranges ever. And you know, if I wear a red, it's like once a month and I have very specific formulas that I like for that. The clear one in the shade Emily, I just don't need this in a clear. Ruth is also one I just don't really feel like I need. It's like the sheer shimmery tan. I'm gonna pass that one on. Bambi is quite similar to NARS Orgasm and I don't really like anything with gold shimmer in it on the lips. I just don't feel like that combination of pink and gold is very flattering on my skin. So I'm gonna pass that one on and I'm definitely passing on the shade Imani because I don't think it looks very good on my skin tone. Side note, did you watch Love Island? Imani is like the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh. What I can say right now, this is the one I definitely want to keep. This bright, cool-toned pink, I have been wearing this nonstop, so at least I am keeping Maggie. You know, I really like this berry shade. This is Liliana, and I swatched this in my makeup collection, and I don't have any berry that's like this, so I am going to keep Liliana. Oh my god, okay, so I definitely can't keep both of these. I... For now, I'm gonna keep Joe. Joe is that kind of my lips but better mauve. I think I think that's the one I would reach for the most regularly. This light, cool-toned pink, I think might be a little too too light for me. I think my friend Dev would like the shade Marlene. So I'm going to send this to Dev. I've talked about the Roman Glasting Melting Bombs approximately a hundred thousand times on my channel. So I'll keep it brief. I did review these in my huge glossy melty lip balm deep dive video, which I'll leave linked in the description box below. Roman ended up launching a nude collection and two of the shades are everything I wanted and more. These have a very thick texture that kind of melts upon contact with your lips, but it stays incredibly cushiony and occlusive on the lips. These are the kinds of formulas that I just, I salivate for. I dream about at night. They have a high shine finish and they just feel ultra nourishing on the lips. I can't get enough of it. They have quite a strong apricot smell, which I really, really like, but I know some of you are sensitive to that. So heads up, it's quite noticeable. And the shade Veiled Rose is my perfect My Lips But Better color because it is quite muted. I feel like a lot of rose colors are quite bright, but this one's more desaturated. It's more muted. It has a little bit of like gray in there. So I feel like it's the kind of thing that goes with everything because I have very pale lips. So this seems quite close to my lip shade and it just goes with everything. And Buffy Coral is even more muted. I would say this is kind of like a cool toned beige, definitely like a little bit of a taupey quality to it, which is really nice. I don't have any color like this in my collection. I did purchase both of these and I knew that I wanted these colors. So I'm gonna be keeping these, which means I think I just hit my, my max capacity for what I'm allowed to keep from this video. Oh no, 17, 18, 19, 20. Shit, shit, shit. Okay, we have to get ruthless here. All right, well, I also bought these. These are the Romand Glasting Color Glosses 
And I can tell you right now, I'm gonna pass these along because I'm already at my max capacity for this video. And these glosses did not change my life. I don't like the smell of these. This is from Romand, so I thought it would have the same smell as the Glasting Melting Balm, but these have the same smell as the Romand Juicy Lasting Tints. It has this kind of like sour, chemically fruit smell. It's not my favorite. But because I love the Glasting Melting Balm so much, I thought I was gonna love the Glasting Color Glosses. And these for me, unfortunately, are just a little bit thin and slippery. They feel more like a lip gloss meets a lip oil. So again, if you love a super lightweight product that feels more thin, a little bit runnier on the lips, then this might be your Holy Grail gloss because it's Roman, so it's quite affordable. They're just $8.68 on YesStyle and they come in six shades. I just don't feel that these provide any real nourishment. I don't feel like they smooth over lip lines. They're thinner than I expected. I don't love the scent. They're just okay. So for me, I'm gonna pass both of these on. And lastly, we have some new lip launches from Charlotte Tilbury. They sent me two shades of the new lipsticks and two shades of the new lip cheats. Let's start with the lip cheat in Icon Baby. If you're unfamiliar with the Charlotte Tilbury lip cheat formula, it's a very long lasting lip liner formula on the waxier side. I don't know if they changed the lip liner because the old lip cheat and pillow talk that I had was initially very stiff and waxy and like, you know, it almost immediately set and you couldn't blend it. And it was like that from the beginning when I purchased it. This, interestingly, has way more slip to it than the lip cheats ever have. And I get a little bit of time to smudge it before it sets and then it sets down to that kind of waxier, long lasting finish. So I don't know if maybe they added a little bit of slip into the formula before it sets because this does feel different than I remembered. And I like it a lot more than I remembered because of that. They describe Icon Baby as a warm nude baby pink. I would agree with that. It's definitely like a peachier pink. I just don't know if I need this kind of shade. I feel like it's somewhat close to Victoria Beckham 02, which is my peach lip liner that I have, but it's more of a peachy brown, whereas this is a peachy pink. And they sent Icon Baby along with the new Kissing formula in Candy Chic, which is their kind of creamy satin lipstick with more of like a shiny formula. And Candy Chic, they describe as a warm candy pink to make everyone wink. Oh, Charlotte Tilbury, gotta love those descriptions. <laughs> Okay, can you tell me what you think based on the application clips of both of these products? Do you think these colors look good on me? I just can't tell. Like, I feel like neither of them are colors that I really will gravitate towards. I don't really reach for like peachy pink lip liners and I don't reach for these like very light, opaque, cool tone pinks on the lips. However, when I wore these together in the application clip, I thought they looked beautiful. So I don't know, do you guys like these colors on me? Let me know because these are not colors I would usually reach for and I'm already at my max capacity for what I'm allowed to keep, but I did kind of start liking these. They also sent me two red shades. So I have the Lip Cheat in Red Carpet Red, which is a cool toned red. And this color is absolutely beautiful. I don't own any red lip liners, so I do see a place for this in my collection. I think that if I wanted to wear a red lipstick, having a red lip liner would be really nice. So I'm gonna keep this, and now that means I'm at 21, so I'm over my max, so I have to get rid of something at this point. But they also sent a new shade of their Matte Revolution lipstick line in Hollywood Vixen, which interestingly came with the Red Carpet Red Red lip liner. I have nothing against the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Revolution lipstick formula. I think it's a nice formula, but for me, when I want a matte lipstick, I actually prefer reaching for my L'Oreal La Volume Matte lipsticks or my L'Oreal Matte Resistance Liquid lipsticks, my M Cosmetics Velvet Lip Creams, my Sunny's Face Lip Dips. I really reach for matte lip products that have some type of blurring technology to them. And I don't find that the Matte Revolution has that blurring technology, which means if I wanna reach for a red, I'm gonna end up reaching for one of the holy grails in my collection that has a blurring finish. So for me, I would rather send this to a friend who I know loves red lipsticks and loves the Matte Revolution line so that it's not just sitting around in my collection waiting to get used forever. You know, I'm gonna put it under the best category because I do think this is a stunning formula. It really is not a matte lipstick that dries out the lip. It's creamy and it feels great. And the lipstick smell like vanilla, which I think is really nice. But you know what, for me, I'm just not gonna use this. So I'm gonna pass this one on. But I am gonna keep the lip cheat in red carpet red. Okay, I've made decisions. I don't need both of these cleansers. I'm going to pass one of them on to a friend that has more dry skin. I'm going to keep the Saffron Cleanser from Saatchi and I'm going to pass on the Saponins Cream Cleanser because I just find that my skin can handle more of like an exfoliating heavy duty cleanser. I don't need something quite as gentle as this. So now I'm down to 20, but I think for now I want to keep Icon Baby and Candy Chic because they just kind of surprised me. So I think I can get rid of one of these. You know, even though I was wearing it in this video, I think I can pass on the Summer Fridays Lip Oil and Soft Mauve to a friend because I have so many any mauve, rosy, my lips, but better shades in my collection. I feel like this one's not gonna get as much use, but Blush Dreams is the shade I've been reaching for very regularly. And I really don't own a kind of lighter peachy pink like this in my collection. So I'm gonna keep this one. I think this is the shade for me. Damn it, we're at 21. All right, okay. I don't know what to do. 
Put your big girl pants on, you got this. I can't do it, 21. You know what, I think I'm happy with that. I have gotten rid of 29 products and I'm keeping 21. So I feel like that's pretty good, but you'll have to let me know in the comments, did I get rid of any products that you actually thought looked better on me than the ones that I kept? I hope you'll subscribe for more videos like this. And if you wanna support the channel, you can click the like button, leave a comment or share this video. It really helps and encourages YouTube to push our videos out to more people. I'll leave my current beauty favorites and fails on the screen for you to keep on watching. And wherever you are, I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next one.